Good afternoon and welcome to Apex Instant Tips episode number 101 brought to you every Friday at 12.05 Eastern Time. I'm Anton. We have with us today our special guest Hayden. Welcome Hayden. Happy Friday Anton. Yeah. Hey, um, that was fun last week. Uh, hit the 100 episode mark. Um, yes. It was fun to see the uh, little video put together. And um, uh, true to form, we're, we're back a week later, and <laughs> this time we're, um, we've prepared a series of gripes against Apex. Yeah, so, so three gripes in one uh, five-minute period. Three gripes in uh, five minutes. And I, I, have a, I have a little wisdom of the week afterwards. Um, if you have a minute after the five minutes, we'll stick around. I look forward to it. All right, so why don't we get right on it. Um, People um, normally come in for a tip today. They get, uh, well, maybe this will be helpful. Let's take a look. What do you have first yeah. for us? So, so, so we, we complain in the spirit that I may be helpful because these have been confusing to me. So I'm a big fan of Apex Advisor. I think you are too, Anton. Um, this particular warning has um, eluded me. Um, I do not understand it. And for all of my research has um, has. Uh, left me thinking that it's um, uh, obsolete. So specifically, uh, the the name is um, the name of the warning is length of item or tabular form column name, and specifically in this instance, it's saying that the length is forty two characters, but it should have a maximum of thirty characters. This is further um, uh, supported by the documentation for twenty two point two that says items longer than 30 characters cannot be referenced using by and variable syntax. So that seems like a very good reason to avoid, to respect this warning and not exceed 30 characters for your item name. But from what I can tell, it's easily validated. It's easy to check whether or not that's true. And it seems to not be true. No, I yeah, can, yeah. yeah I, I cannot figure out how to make Apex not work because the um, item name is too long. Right. I think, like you said, I think it's just obsolete if you're if you're running a reasonable version of the database. If you're on 12.2 or higher of the database, ignore that. Get rid of it. Exactly. So hopefully I can spare you some time and you can ignore this. Second group. Uh, so this is also being a source of confusion to me. So mm -hmm. again, I share this. And, the, and actually, just to rewind, if you know different, please let me know. I, uh, yeah. It's possible that I'm missing something. Okay. Next gripe, uh, it, has, it has been a source of confusion to me that in Quick SQL, again, another thing in Apex that I use all the time, that um, if you use the table audit uh, table directive, it will give you um, this audit recommendation. So it used to uh, create a table um, uh, that, uh, that, that stored all the DML that you performed against, against the table. Uh, it, and now it has updated this recommendation to use the, or, the uh, Oracle audit feature. Uh, it's all well and good, except uh, it, it would appear that on apex.oracle.com and on my free cloud environment here, audit is not enabled. So it was confusing to me uh, running this, not least because when I run this, it doesn't even give me an error. It, it, right. it, it, it runs without complaint, but then there's no audit on my table. So it was, right. it is a, uh, it is a confusing recommendation. Yeah, uh, I've, I've run into the same thing, um, in part that it does work on my, <laughs> my installations. Um, but uh, I think Rich is offering to log a bug. I say, yes. Yes. Uh, more people logging bugs uh, helps. I have logged a bug. And oh, my recommendation to the Oracle Apex team is uh, either uh, tell me that I'm wrong, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I change the recommendation to something that is enabled, uh, or at least clarify somewhere that um, it's not going to work on oracle.apex.com. All right, this gives me a minute and a half. I have a gripe too. Okay, okay. Uh, let's hear it. If you uh, go to shared components and take a look at um, how you access uh, web services of any type, um, there used to be a web services, and if you had built one, you would see a legacy deprecated web services here. Now we use REST data sources, it's great. You declaratively um, can define a REST data source. Now go edit a page. Um, and if you edit a page and just add a process to this page, um, uh, if you take a look under execute the type of code, 
you still have web service as something you can execute, but you don't have REST data source. Um, so that web service should be legacy and they should have a new declarative one that is in fact REST data source. Um, there is a way to do it. You can execute code instead. And the code that you would execute is in the API documentation, you can take a look. It is apex underscore exec dot execute rest source. So you have to write your own code. It's no longer declarative, um, but at least it exists. So that is uh, great. No, my, my gripe. So three gripes in five minutes. Um, yes. So we can definitely gripe faster than we can give real tips. <laughs> yes. So um, uh, to me, the best uh, case scenario would be someone could let us know that we're mistaken about any of these criticisms. Um, and we will then issue an update. But um, uh, and uh, short of that, um, maybe uh, it, it is comforting to you to know that um, these things don't make sense to us. Yeah. Um, all right. So um, I'm going to answer this question really quickly. I do not think that you can add a where condition to a view when you um, use Apex quick when you use Quick SQL to define a view. Basically, you tell it um, the tables, it understands the conditions, it pulls all the columns in for you, it saves you a bunch of typing. Um, almost all the time when I use Quick SQL, I save that Quick SQL script and then I go through it and I make some changes. I'm going to say, so I make a lot of changes to that Quick SQL yeah. script. Uh, one that I make almost all the time is uh, that, oh, let me just say, we made our five minutes before I, yeah. before I lose sight of that. Uh, we, we finished that in five minutes. Yeah. Uh, so one of the other things in Quick SQL that's related to this a little bit, I, I always save that script and I go through it and make changes. One of the changes that I make is if you, if you put a default on a, a column, it's going to add the default clause. So let's say you want default Y. Yes. It's going to, well, what do you have here, Hayden? Well, uh, we actually discussed this earlier this week. Okay. Um, I actually didn't know this. Um, if you uh, deliberately pass, a, if you explicitly pass a null value to a column that has a default value of say Y, it will actually input null. That's right. So How can you avoid that? The, you need to, if you don't want that to happen, you need to update the um, uh, directive to uh, uh, default on null. Right, so exactly. It would be default on null y yeah. instead of default y. What's funny about that is when you use the sys GUID, it actually uses default on null for the, yes. for the ID, but for the other columns, it just does default. So I'd like there to be a flag or something. Yeah. When, you do, when you want to default a column, you pretty much want it to be a not null column. Yeah. And you want it, if they, if it's, if they put in null, you pr usually you want it to have the default. Agreed. Yes. Um, so um, I have, oh, well, if you just came for five minutes, uh, do all the thing, blah, 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 splat, send a letter to your mom, um, all that. If, um, if you have another minute, though, I have a small wisdom of the week. Um, Hayden, I don't want you to fall off your chair when I tell you this. Um, big, <laughs> big surprising news. I actually wrote that blog post that I talked about a year ago. Um, <laughs> I, I actually wrote it a year ago. I finally published it. Um, it's uh, an updated Apex resource manager plan. We talked about this in episode 46, resource manager plans. Um, I've talked about an update to that. Um, it is available now on apexdebug.com, uh, my uh, non-branded uh, blog. Fantastic. So. And uh, what was the source of delay? Uh, well, the source of delay was essentially, I, I make a couple of claims in there and I've tested them. They all seem to work, but I wanted to do some Oracle database tracing. I wanted to trace the database and actually confirm 100% that what I'm saying is absolutely true. I just haven't had the time, right? And I, I really believe- work went into this blog. Yeah, and it, yeah, real work went into the blog, real work went into testing it, but it would just, it's just so much work to, to fully test out, uh, you know, some of these resource manager type things. Um, so yeah, it, that, that's really what it was. Um, so uh, if anybody finds that, that my claims are untrue, um, 
I'm happy to take the criticism and, and make any updates, but I, I, I believe everything there is accurate. So. And um, on, on the subject, I would say that episode 46 is probably one of the more valuable tips we've ever given. I agree. I think the resource manager um, is something that everybody should have. Um, it's, it's worthy repeating it today. For sure. Yeah. All right. Anything else from you? Uh, nothing. Um, I wish everyone a good weekend. I as well. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>